Rockstar, Coach Betty Rocker here. Welcome to today's upper body and core workout. All you'll need for today's workout are some resistance objects. I've got some dumbbells here. You could also use water bottles, water jugs, even laundry jugs. All make great props. Um, some space to move and optionally you can have an elevated surface. This can be really helpful in assisting you with some of the uh, moves where you're going to be on your hands if you are still building up some strength. And I will show an alternative to one of the moves where you use your exercise ball, since I know some of you have these at home and it's fun to get them out for a workout. This is a low impact workout, which is just fantastic. So you can do it with no jumping and you will still be getting an awesome workout, really working those muscles in the upper body and the abs. So let's get right into this. Let's go ahead and start out with some plank walkouts. And remember, you can walk out to your couch or chair keeping it elevated. So we're gonna stand tall at the top of our mat, engaging our core, feeling energy through our entire body. Maybe have a moment to do a quick stretch with your arms up overhead, leaning your body side to side, really sticking those hips out, just feeling good in your body. Wiggle it around, pedal out your feet, adjust your pants as needed. And let's go ahead and bend the knees and walk our hands out, coming into a tall or elevated plank. Great job. Let's go ahead and bend the knees, walking it back, come back to standing, roll those shoulders back a couple times, just getting into that body. Walk it out again, option to keep your upper body elevated, or of course come down onto your mat in that tall plank. Keep your core braced as you do this. Great job. Now this one, I'm gonna invite you to draw your knees across your body, underneath your body to opposite elbows. So each time you come down into plank, let's add this little core burner, little corkscrew kind of twist where we draw our knee to our opposite elbow. Nice work. Each time I'm coming up, I'm just stretching my chest open because it feels great. And remember that when you're in this position in the plank, you are definitely holding an isometric chest strengthening movement here. In a plank, we're also activating our biceps our back and core. Great job. Let's do three more walkouts with the corkscrew knee. It's kind of a cross body, slow mountain climber. Nice job. Two more. Walk it out. Really activate and bend the knees. Remember, you can stay elevated with your upper body. Looking strong. Last one. Walk it out. Cross with the knees. Starting to feel some heat in the body. Good job all the way up to standing. Now, for this next one, we're gonna really activate the triceps. So, we're gonna bring our arms up and either holding one weighted object between our hands, we're gonna do overhead tricep extensions. You could also do this with two lighter dumbbells, holding them in your hands like this. I'm gonna go ahead and use a single dumbbell. And what I'd like you to do is come to a kneeling position. And if this bothers you at all, go ahead and put something underneath you. So let's start out kneeling, bringing the weighted object up overhead, pressing your palms together if you're holding one single object. My goal here is that as you lower your weighted object down towards your back, you keep your elbows hugging in together. So if you've got two weighted objects, same thing. Just try to keep your elbows parallel to each other. Count your reps. I want eight to 12 total reps here. You're doing great. If you want a little extra challenge, you can go ahead and sit your butt down and then come straight back up, making sure you're keeping your back straight, really activating your core here. I know this might look like a loop move, but you really are working with your abs because you're pressing something up overhead. So your goal is to keep your core super, super stable here. No arched backs. I've got about two more reps that I think I'm able to do. And remember, you wanna stop with your reps when you feel like you could maybe do one, maybe two more with really good form. So you wanna to go to that end feel, and that's how we're gonna kinda of calibrate the right amount of resistance for us. We wanna be in that eight to 12 rep range. Give yourself a quick breather. And our next move, we're gonna do some bicep curls, and then it's gonna be a bent arm lateral raise. So choose a weighted object that you feel is an appropriate amount for you to do that rep range of 8 to 12 just with this motion. Go ahead and come to standing. When you're ready, brace your core, 
Shoulders back and down in their sockets as if they were up against a wall. Turn your palms to face forward. Make sure you feel comfortable and stable through your feet. Curl them up and then come down halfway and you're gonna come up with your arms bent. Lower all the way down, curl down halfway and you're gonna almost turn your palm up as you lift out doing a really nice deltoid uh, stabilizing and strengthening move here. So you're getting both uh, biceps and shoulders with this move. I absolutely love this little combo. Again, it's just eight to 12 reps here, keeping that core braced and stable. Great job. Remember to lower all the way down before coming into that bicep curl so that we can get a full range of motion for the biceps. Nice work. Curl it up, keeping the chest open, shoulders back and down in their sockets. Feel free to take a slightly wider stance. And as always, feel free to stop before me or go beyond me. Remember that you and I probably have different amounts of weight. We're in different places today. Doesn't mean somebody's better or worse, stronger or weaker. It's just all about subjecting your body to how it feels today, how much sleep you got, where you're at in your cycle, how you're feeling in your body, and what weight or resistance you have available to you. Last one for me. And I'm gonna set down my weighted objects. So our next move is a bicycle crunch. And this one we all know probably and love very simple to accomplish it. On the floor, we're gonna come down, pressing our lower back into the mat, bringing our hands behind our ears, and from here, we're gonna lift our knees up to a tabletop flat position. We're gonna lift our right elbow towards our left knee, extending out with the opposite leg and just alternating sides. Great job, don't pull on your head or neck here. You're just going to use your hands as contacting pressure to guide you as you alternate side, working those obliques, even a little bit of the legs. Now, if this is a bit much, remember, you can tap your feet down, touching them down to the floor as you alternate sides. So that way you're never fully extending a, a straight leg. You're just keeping both knees bent at all times, just alternating which knee comes up to reach the elbow. We're gonna go for just a little bit longer. Feel free to stop. If you've started to fatigue and your lower back can no longer maintain contact with the mat, great job. Five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna, if you have a Swiss ball in our second set, second round, we're gonna go ahead and attempt those on the Swiss ball, but now you've mastered how to do it on the mat, so you can continue with that if that's the best option for you. All right, we're gonna move into a back strengthening move now. It's the reverse fly. I love this move. Choose a weight that's challenging for you. This is just so awesome for developing the strength of the upper back and really helping to um, stabilize your posture and alignment. So go ahead and hinge your hips back, keeping your core braced and strong. We're not gonna let our shoulders or back round. We're gonna stay upright. And those arms are gonna come straight out to the side as if they were big wings and you were just opening them up against a very resistant wind. Good, I want eight to 12 reps. And you should not be um, jerking or using momentum to get those arms up. We wanna have a smooth and controlled lift with the arms. Great job. Last one for me, I'm just at eight reps. I chose a really challenging weight amount for myself and that's really gonna work my back muscles. Obviously, we have plenty of room to play around in that rep range. And as we start to get stronger, when we're doing movements repeatedly over time, is you'll start to notice that you can do more reps at the weight that you've been using because you start to get stronger. And that's why we have that rep range. So I'm gonna go ahead and have a quick hydration break here before we go back through this again. having some rock and restore my free form essential amino acids which not only are going to help support muscle repair and recovery but because I'm a woman over 40 <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm getting all of my essential amino acids in on a daily basis that means I'm having protein in each meal which doesn't discount all the other essential important nutrients I want to get in my day 
uh, but I really focus on those amino acids because they support not only my muscle tissue, but my cognitive brain function, enzyme and hormone health, and immune system. So your amino acids are very important and something not to take lightly. So I'm also using my Betty Rocker protein powders in my food, in smoothies, and like I said, because I'm over 40, I'm doing a little bonus boost with my aminos during my workout. All right, we're gonna come back to that plank walkout to cross body climber. We're gonna go a little bit faster this time. Are you ready? Here we go. Bend the knees, walk it out. Option to turn it into a running climber. Stand tall, walk it out. Option to do four climbers before coming back to stand. Good, walk it out. One, two, three, four. Come back, stand tall. That's right, it's fast but you're still pretty low impact. Great job, come on down. Run those knees. Up, down. Keep that core nice and flat. Keep your back flat. Make sure your hands are stacked just below shoulders as you walk out into that plank. So strong. Bring your body fully upright into standing when you come to the top. Open your chest. One, two, three, four, last one. Walk it back. Great job. Get that heart rate up a little bit. Woo! Catch your breath. Have a quick breather. All right. Overhead triceps extensions. Find the weight that you're planning to use. Feel free to change the amount of resistance that you're using in this round from the last round. Option to either have two going back or one that you're holding on to both sides of. And we're gonna go ahead and drop our butt back and then come up really focusing on keeping that back straight and not arching. Focus on your core here and bracing it. Great job. Keep your elbows hugging in so that they're not splaying out to the side. Great job, come on. Eight to 12 reps. You got this. Keep breathing. For me, 10 reps was my max with that weight. You may have done eight. You maybe did 12. It's really your workout. <sighs> Have a quick breather. We're gonna move on to those bicep curls with the bent arm lateral raise. So we're working the biceps and the shoulders. Let's go ahead and find some resistance. That feels good and challenging. Come back to your feet. Bring your shoulders back and down into their sockets. And remember that they're, they should feel like your shoulders are up against a wall. Don't force it, just keep them back because that is going to put your biceps in the optimal position for the curl and not pinch the head of the bicep tendon as it goes through into the shoulder capsule. Out and up, lower down, curl, out and up. And if you want a little refresher, on what I'm talking about, I highly encourage you to watch the uh, intro to the rotator cuff video, which is in the Foundations of Functional Fitness, um, which is available to you as a member right inside Rock Your Life. Great job. Curl, down, bring the arms up. Beautiful. Remember, eight to 12 reps. <sighs> down, out, and all the way down, nice and smooth and controlled. Remember, you can stop before me. You can go past me. This is your workout. Going strong, keeping that body upright, keeping that core engaged. Out and down. I've got one to go. Woo! Feeling it. And all the way down. Excellent work. Now we're coming back into our bike. Bicycle crunch, which you have mastered without any equipment at all. Stay with what we did in our last set if you're comfortable there. If you want to challenge yourself further and use the exercise ball, go ahead and get it out 
And with the size of your exercise ball, you can see that when I'm sitting down, my knees are about, about 90 degrees. And I could probably put a little more air into this ball, <laughs> but you wanna go, it, their balls are size based by your height. So I think I have the smallest size because I'm about five foot one, and that works really well for me. So I'm sure you guys know uh, about all that. So I'm gonna lean back so that my lower, this is the most challenging version, is where the least amount of your upper back is supported. So to start out, if you wanna roll the ball down so a little bit more of your mid to upper back is supported, I'd recommend that if you haven't done a bicycle crunch on the ball before. And you're just gonna practice alternating your knees side to side, even as you rotate your upper body. If you're down on the mat, please begin and use the position that works best for you. Remember, we're not pulling on our neck. And notice that I said we're practicing. I don't want you to get in your head if you fall to the side or lose your balance. That's part of the fun and part of the challenge of using an exercise ball. So for those of you who are a little more advanced or experienced with this, I've rolled my back a little deeper so I'm more in a reverse tabletop position. And I find this to be the most challenging way to do these. And I'm building up my own strength here. You can see I'm wobbling around and I'm totally okay with that. It's recruiting a lot of core stabilizing muscle being in this imbalanced position. Don't do anything that challenges you so much. You're hurting yourself, please. Just challenge yourself to the best of your ability. And remember, it's all a practice. Last three, two, and one. Whew. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Great job. Okay. We're gonna add in a move. We're gonna do a chest press. So let's go ahead and lower all the way down onto the mat, choosing weighted objects that feel supportive to you. So we're gonna go ahead and find that nice position just like you did in the bicycle crunch. If you're already down in your bicycle crunch, you can just stay there. Pressing your lower back down into the mat. And we're gonna go ahead and, and just do a couple chest presses here. So the weighted objects come straight up over the chest. Great job. And, and maybe you're happy with the amount of weight you've chosen. Maybe you want a little heavier. Totally up to you. Now, one thing that I wanna invite you to do is as we have our arms up high, lift your right knee and then extend it out as you draw the elbows down. Place it on the floor, bring the right knee in, extend it out, place it down. Option, just like with the bicycle crunches, if the extended hovering leg is a little bit too much, just draw the knee in and place your foot right back down on the floor. You're still gonna be getting a great workout. Press, in, in, and out, in, and out. You're starting to burn with your chest a little bit. we we'll just give it um, up until the rep range that feels right for you. This is just an option. And complete your set when you get to that end feel where you feel like that's enough reps. We're gonna do that a little bit differently in our next set. Just building up on what we're learning. Great job. Go ahead and set those off to the side and we're gonna do our last move, which is the reverse fly. And the reverse fly really does work the opposite muscles to the chest. And this is one of the things that helps keep your shoulders and your rotator cuff nice and stable is when you're really paying attention to your body on all sides, especially around joints like the shoulder or the hip. So get yourself in position, choose your resistance Bring your shoulders back into their sockets in a nice neutral position. Brace your core, send your hips back to 45 degrees. Keep your head and neck in neutral. And let's sweep our arms up and to the sides. We're not bringing the arms back behind us. They're going straight out to the sides. You may have a soft bend in the elbow. That's totally fine. <sighs> Feel the muscles working between your shoulder blades. This is where you should isolate that sensation and really feel it. Remember eight to 12 reps is your range. If you can't get eight, that means your weight's a little too heavy. If you're easily going past 12, blowing right up to 15 to 20, your weight could be a little heavier, but if that's all you've got, go ahead and do more reps. Last one for me. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that move. Bend the knees, set down the weighted objects, and we're gonna get right back into that chest activation, but with the core, the corkscrew core move. So come to the top of your mat, breathe in, reset, hydrate, or fuel up, and let's go. Bend the knees, walk it out, one, two, three, four, walk it back. Stand tall, reset the shoulders, walk it back out. Keep that core braced throughout this movement. Walk it out. Nice tall plank or elevated plank, still a great option. You can walk it right out onto the side of your couch. Walk it back. Keep your core strong and stable. Keep your back flat. Don't let your hips lift up. Nice job, come on, walk it out. Got two to go. So good. Last one, finish it strong. Walk it back. Nicely done. Awesome work. Catch your breath. Go ahead and come down to the mat. We're gonna do our overhead triceps extensions. Woo. I love this workout. It's very isolated. It's very specific and it's very effective. Let's go ahead and pick up the weighted object we're gonna use. Feel free to put a towel below your knees if that's supportive for you. Come on up, bringing your weighted objects or objects straight overhead, bracing the core. And then we're gonna lower the weighted object towards our back as we then extend it, coming up, lowering the hips and then coming straight up. You can squeeze your glutes as you come to the top, but if you do, I just want you to really pay attention to the integration between your glutes and core. This is really all about the stability of your abs as you have that weighted object overhead. So you're tricking your body to ignore how uh, sore your triceps are getting by just paying attention to your abs for a moment. And then you can come back and tune in to the proper position of your elbows and of your triceps working here. Eight to 12 reps. Last set, best set. Come on, do your best. I know you are. Last two for me. Last one. Woo! Bring it down with control and set it to the side. Woo! Take a deep breather. Reset. We're gonna move on to biceps and shoulders. Doing great. Now pick up some weighted objects. Stand tall, shoulders back in their sockets, and palms face forward, curling up, coming down, and out to the side. So when you come down, you only come down to that 90 degree bend with your arms, and then you bring your elbows straight up to the side. Nice work. Curl, down, lift. Keep count of your reps. Down and out. Great job. Remember to completely extend and open the arms after you complete the lateral raise. Keep your core strong. Keep your chest open. Keep your shoulders back. Great work. Down, curl, and out. Remember you can stop before me. You can go past me. I've got about two to go for my rep range, for this weight that I'm using. <sighs> Down and out. Great work. Woo! <sighs> okay, back to our super fun bicycle crunches. So, if you're using your exercise ball, get it out. If you're doing these on the mat, find blueberry spine, pressing your lower back down into the mat, bringing your hands up to support your head without pulling on your neck, and begin. Knee to elbow, knee to elbow. Remember, if you're on the wall and you want more control, you're just gonna drop your butt down towards the floor a little farther, giving you more surface area on the ball with your body to control the movement. If you want 
more and you're feeling confident in your balance, just go ahead and test out leaning your body back further across the ball before coming to the crunch. This is just gonna give you a deeper range of motion in your crunch and for your core. So we're working the upper abdominals here as well as the obliques. Nice job, lower abs. It's really like a total core move, whether you're doing this on the floor or on the ball. I find all of the ways of doing these make my abs sore. It's just fun to have options so if you have the ball, I just want to invite you to play around with it. Last two, and release it down. Now, if you want to stay on the ball and do your chest presses on the ball, you 100% can for this set. You're just gonna get your body so that your head is supported on the ball, lifting up through your hips and pressing up with your arms. If you want the additional challenge of the knee up, I just recommend a small lift with the knee or just keep both feet on the floor and that would be fine. I'm gonna do this without the ball this round and just practice some other fun stuff. So regardless of how you are, just make sure that your lower back is making contact and you're gonna press your arms up and lower them down. This time, if, I'm, if you're down on the mat, go ahead and lift your feet up into that tabletop. We're gonna alternate arms now. So you maybe you've done a couple with both arms. So we're gonna go ahead and press one arm up and extend the opposite leg out straight. You're just gonna prolong this chest press set. So I've shown you like four different options, four ways you can do chest presses. When you get to eight to 12 reps with both arms and you feel fatigued, please stop. You've got tons of ways you can do this. They're all just super supportive and add the bonus ab stabilization. Even if you're on the ball and you're not doing the knee thing, you're still having to use your abdominals to stabilize you just because you're balancing on the ball. Oh my gosh, I've got like one more on each side, I think. <laughs> so good, amazing work. Bend the knees and come down to your start position. Great job, that was so fun. Oh my gosh. All right, we have one move left in our circuit. It's the reverse flies. So let's go ahead and come back to our feet, grabbing those weighted objects rolling your shoulders back into their sockets, hinging your hips back, and we're gonna sweep our arms out to the side. Great job, eight to 12 reps. Hang in there, this is the last set. goodness. When you're done, bend the knees, set those weighted objects down. And I have one last final bonus challenge for you. We're going to do some squat depresses. I want you to strive for 10 reps. So bring those weighted objects up to your shoulders. You can face your palms towards each other or away from you. Either way is going to give you nice stability. Send your butt back and press up. Send your butt back, press up. Squeeze your glutes. Keep your core stable. Go for 10 reps here. Great job. This is just a little bonus. Final little finisher. <sighs> Keep your core engaged. Knees track in line with toes. Nice job. Three, two, last one. One. Amazing work, rock star. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me for today's workout. I love getting a chance to work out with you. Make sure that you're staying really nourished after today's workout. Be sure you're getting plenty of those essential amino acids into your body. So those are gonna be the spectrum of aminos, the nine amino acids that your body can't make on its own. That's why they're called essential. So I really encourage you to make sure that you have protein in each meal that you eat throughout the day. This is not to say all the other nutrients aren't important. They're so important. I want you to try to get them from whole foods. I just want you to support your muscle tissue with these nutrient-dense, protein-rich foods. And you can supplement with a really awesome protein powder like the one that I make from Whole Betty by Betty Rocker. Whole Betty for your whole body. 
and I use these products every single day. I've got a delicious line of yummy protein powders, so I'd love for you to check them out. And just be sure that if you're active, if you're an active woman, to, to be sure that you're really getting essential protein into your body on a daily basis. And that's gonna help you not only with your muscle tissue and muscle recovery, but your brain function, your hormone and enzyme function, and also your immune system. Amino acids are used for many different things in the body. So it's important that we're paying attention to meeting our needs each day. So I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I'm Betty Rocker. You are so awesome and amazing. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye for now. Two thumbs up from me, uh, best protein by far that I've ever had. But not only is it good quality, but it actually tastes really good. You can mix it with just about anything. You can bake with it. It also tastes really good just by itself with some almond milk um, or even water. I think the thing I like best about it is the brand. Um, I really trust Betty Rocker and I really trust her products and that what I'm putting in my body is clean and um, that it's there to make me better, um, to make my workouts better, and to make me healthier. Um, and I've tried other um, powders that have greens in them, and I just don't like the taste. Um, and even if the taste is something that I can tolerate, um, it's usually hard to mix with just water or almond milk, and that is not the case with very green protein powder. Um, I like it with just almond milk, and I shake it up, it mixes super easily, um, and it tastes